Yeah, uh, it's that time of the year that Russia uh, assaulted Ukraine actually on uh, February the 25th. That's eventually, if we look at the time frame, uh, now you're talking about over 11 days of war in Ukraine. And it says here, after I entered this link here, look at it. When did Russia assault Ukraine? When when the war commenced? War assault on Ukraine? When? And uh, Google answers. People also ask, when did the Ukraine war start? 2022 on March 8, 2022 at 1.30 POP GMT 8, 8 March 2022. Okay, so I don't think there is much to say about this stuff, right? When did the war start on Ukraine? It started on a March 8th of 2022, year 2022. And so the only thing I need to take now, basically, is date and time. So today, since today is 3 minutes to 3 o'clock on March the 6th, 2022, uh, let me explain to you something on the war on Ukraine took place on March 8th. So we're going to have to wait another two days for the war on Ukraine to take place. No, I'm not kidding. This is actually real. Well, uh, I am glad eventually that I video recorded this stuff. Yes, I am glad. Uh, I'm also completely aware that my computer is being surveillance, probably no other computer in the world. I am in the midst of publishing this news. You see, in the midst of publishing this news. So... I know that they watch everything the fuck I do like a hawks. Absolutely everything I do they watch like a hawks. That's why I'm glad I did video record it anyways. Okay? I video recorded it. You were able to see with your own eyes. I video recorded it. Uh, this is basically the title that I'm using. Eventually I'm going to publish this video under and you're gonna see actually the video now rather than only an article uh, on exactly also one of the issues is the main issue for me is expedited speeded ethnic extermination genocide of Ukrainian people in Crimea in by Russia occupied Crimea everybody's talking about Ukraine right now but the Ukrainian people are getting exterminated, killed, persecuted left and right right now in Crimea. Because Vladimir Putin has other priorities in place next to burning Ukraine to the ground. If not being capable to take one over. He is just weakening Ukraine. Uh, definitely destroyed, definitely punished Ukraine, damaged Ukraine in uh, in in a, such a sense that Ukraine is going to need probably another 50 years to rebuild itself, if ever. It's a catastrophe, and not a single bomb landed on a Russian soil at this point yet. Uh, yeah, we entered the 12th day of war on Ukraine. Ukrainians are fighting courageously. However, the assistance from the West rather is a joke. So what I'm going to do at this point, because of this...
I like this number here. That's much better. I did not like that other number at all, and it would be good for Google to explain how exactly did that number Oh, that's much better now, Google. That's much, much, much better. How did Google came up? Where the hell did they came up with a number uh, such as March 8, 2022? That's a really, really good question. Uh, let's go back. Let's go back. You can see also, if you pay attention, because I also took a screenshot of this stuff, you can also see here that the answer on my question, on exactly this question, where is auto in Ukraine, when, you can clearly see, look at it, where is auto in Ukraine, when, you clearly can see here, as I know that as soon as I'm going to click here, search, it's going to be different. You can clearly see that Google answers with completely different issue. Ah, there you go. Again, the same thing. Look at it. Look at this. There you go. So, just really, really glad so that you can see this kind of stuff. You know what's going to happen. What they're doing, basically. I already have exposed what they're doing. What they're doing, pretty much, is this thing here this is basically what they're doing western anti-russian sanctions undermine itself within just days not even one week and you can see how the british royal by buckingham palace owned shell company just bought oil uh and then let me see a uh, next a uh, pakistan also commits itself to major agreement with the Russia on import of natural gas and wheat and, and, and stuff like this, 2 million metric tons and so on. I understand Pakistan somehow, because Pakistan is a poor country, but man, when you sit in the top of the world with so much money, uh, is it like really, really necessary for you to go on and engage in a trade during Times like this, while basically parading around on how you are standing up for Ukrainian people. That actually totally sucks. So you can see that war on Ukraine is undermined in London. It's like an epicenter of this undermining of war on Ukraine, uh, actually on of even sanctions or what they refer to as a sanctions this actually sucks because i don't know how do you answer with the sanctions on uh on war on a, such an aggression that we see you were able to see this thing here i have published look at look what's going on in ukraine at first glance it appears on this 12th day on, on this 12th day of aggression in ukraine look what's going on this year, this is what's going on, and you're going to talk to me about the sanctions, that you're going to resolve this stuff with the sanctions. Well, that's not too damn good, right? You don't, you don't actually do that kind of stuff. So what they're doing, what actually they're doing is they're parading around, they are clowning around, they are clouding, clouding the whole picture about the war situation in Ukraine. They are undermining one with the so-called sanctions declining in the face of Ukrainian President Zelensky, who inquired at least, at least he asked West, NATO European Union, if they can protect Ukrainian sky, not he didn't ask what otherwise he should request. In my opinion, he should ask for bombardment of Russia. 
I, in my opinion, he should ask about military intervention, air intervention on Russia, the same as Bill Clinton did with the Serbia in 1999. This is what I would do as the president of Ukraine if I would be in his position. I would ask West to firmly stand behind Ukraine and engage in exactly same type of military intervention as it did in 1999 against Serbia, which committed war crimes against four other nations on Balkans. Serbia declared a war against Slovenia, against Croatia, against the Bosnia, against the Kosovo. They were killing civilians left and right, back and forth. And it was finally Bill Clinton that decided to take matter in his own hands despite the Russian threats. The same threats we see today with Vladimir Putin, uh, who apparently sits on a nuclear bombs. And what he did was he bombarded Belgrade good, he bombarded Serbia real good, good enough for them to sit at the table and sign a peace deal. That's what I would do as a Ukrainian president. But Zelensky would be happy if the West would at least protect his Ukrainian sky so that the Russian planes would not go about around and bombard civilians, kill civilians. Uh, you know, it's almost like a one and a half million Ukrainian people that already escaped from Ukraine. You can see the number here. It's a 1.3 million as of today. Uh, and so when you call resettlement of civilians you refer to that as an assistance you're not doing a favor to ukraine what you're doing is basically you are assisting vladimir putin in exactly what i'm going to publish today this thing here you see this thing this is extermination this is eventually this is a uh, wiping out Crimean people, because this is this is what I want to publish. Russia is forcing Ukrainians from occupied Crimea and Donbass now even to fight against own Ukrainian people. So at this point in time that international society is all concentrated on war in Ukraine which apparently, according to Google, in some sources, because they are undermining this, what's going to happen? Here you're going to have a March 15. And with this kind of information, with the world as it is today, when people depend on the jobs uh, from day to day on their salary and their pay, they have very little say in this world. What's going to happen is, in this demented world, people are going to start to mix the date and time and news and what's going on, what actu what in actuality is happening. And you know what's happening like this? On the long term, they completely undermine Ukraine. That's basically how these days countries are torn apart. Because we live, we don't, we don't go by the books anymore. There was something good about these books. You couldn't rewrite the books, but you can rewrite the internet real, real, real fast. You can play with the internet, you can modify the time, the date, the news, you can undermine your own sanctions with all sorts of crap that otherwise should be actually assistance in someone whom West refers even as an ally of the West, but that's the Ukraine. They wouldn't accept one in NATO, they wouldn't accept they wouldn't accept one in the European Union. They kept one out for eight years because the war properly stated right there started in 2014. And instead they did arm Russia really well and they supplied Russia also with financial and all other necessary for a total invasion on Ukraine uh, prerequisites. Financial assistance, oil purchase contracts and stuff like this. Russia really buffed for this war. This is not just the war out of blue. And so, you know, these sanctions that you see that are undermined, this stuff that I exposed today about, uh, this is just something to... This news, this news is actually related 
this news is actually related more than anything to this thing here because with the time as time goes by you know that's the kind of news they're going to use eventually they already are using you can clearly see their intentions to undermine entire ukrainian state entire ukrainian nation you know this assistance this refugees that they find homes and this and that that would not even have to happen you wouldn't have to have this poor ukrainian people leaving their homes and going back and forth if only as Zelensky asked, which I am not okay with it under any circumstances. Um, however, I, under I understand his position. Um, he should have, just as I stated, he should have, have re requested a military intervention in different from the one in Serbia that Bill Clinton did in year 1999. However, if at least they would protect the skies, is what he is saying this poor women and children that vladimir putin refers to as nazis while at the same time he's killing people in donetsk and in occupied crimea yeah that's what they did in 2014 then they go and they kill they murdered over their tatar ukrainian tatar people and ukrainians they kill them every day they kill them uh, and they refer at the same time to Ukraine as a Nazi state. This people, if only that will be done, this people wouldn't have to run for the refuge all over the Europe, leaving their own homes, leaving empty houses so the Russians can move in into occupied houses, into occupied cities and so on. You know, Europe, this is really a much bigger picture. Ukraine will never be liberated without its Crimea and Donetsk freed from the Russian occupation, from its asylums which occupied Ukrainian homes of Crimea and Donetsk, thrown out of Crimea and out of Donetsk, because that's a part of Ukraine. That's a Crimea, is a part of Ukraine. That's not Russia. Russian civilians are thrown out, killed, murdered, exiled and it's the russians that move inside of the house that's ethnic extermination that is completely in line with adolf hitler that much about vladimir putin is claimed how ukraine is a nazi state so i'm asking journalists fellow journalists i didn't go along all this stuff and if i would have gone along all this stuff i too would undermine the principles of Ukrainian existence. The way this works is just as and just basically just as I did, I did a little bit extra on this stuff. So that I remind basically, so that I remind, so that I demonstrate basically what how this war came about. So what I hope for in this case is that the Western journalists are gonna see in actuality what's going on from this from my news site. Uh, rather than to go about and copy from one another, uh, I know, I know, because you are able to see how this computer, how they see the stuff I do, and how they respond to it, you know, I can go back here and I can Google the same words here, I can Google this stuff here, and look what's going to happen, it's gone, now the question here is, where did Russia invade Ukraine, how many soldiers did Russia lost in Ukraine? Why did Russia take from Ukraine? Uh, what you were able to see, when did Ukraine start a war? Which initially, the Google even demonstrated. As you see, everything was changed upon realizing. An error, a mistake, evidence to undermine the human logic the truth about Ukraine. So I hope that from this new site, other new sites or other are going to pick from and take a hard stand against the people who started this war. This is what started this war. This is how this war started. And I hope that these people, these few people are not going to undermine entire human existence. Because this isn't the first time this thing is happening. These people supported Adolf Hitler too during the World War II. Remember, 
British royals, before the British public got a hold of proofs about Adolf Hitler's deeds all over Europe, were in bed with Adolf Hitler. Remember this, story repeats. Stalin stated one, gratitude is for the dogs. I don't think the gratitude is for the dogs. Uh, but then again, uh, when I really think about this type of assistance, that much effort placed into major European country with a 45 million people, the biggest European country, right after the Russia. This is, Ukraine is the biggest European country and comes to the second place to the Russia. When I think about issues like this, about the people like this undermining our European security, the security of Baltic states, Poland, Ukraine of course, Romania, Bulgaria, Hungary, Croatia, Slovenia, Bosnia, these are all Eastern European states, folks. Nevertheless, Germany, which seems to be very implicit, very slow in a military response, in a real aid that should be given, very assistant the way I see you know, they always come up with some kind of undermining. You know, they always come up with some kind of, you know, you ask, that's why I said that probably Zelensky should ask for a military intervention on a Russian soil. Yeah, Vladimir Putin sits uh, on a nuclear bombs. This is, this is, this is what they repeat over and over and over. It's Vladimir Putin. He's got a nuclear button. He's got a nuclear bombs. He's got this. He's got that. He's got that. Okay, so you're going to tell me now that if Russia today was assault, assaulted Sweden or Norway, probably not Finland, but Sweden and Norway, let's say, or Germany, because they, they, they are positioned also. They, they have occupied from Poland the occupied portion of the Baltic right there. It's called Kaliningrad. That's a land stolen from the Polacks. So they're pretty close, and to Denmark, and to Sweden too, if you look at the map. So you're going to tell me that you would have second thoughts about what exactly, how to engage against the Russia, also under those circumstances, because you know, this kind of conduct, this is like a double standard conduct. You see, this is, this is a little Russian soil that is occupied right between the Poland and Litva. Latvia, basically. Uh, Lithuania, sorry. And it's not too far, really, from Berlin. And it's not too far from Stockholm. And it's not too far from Denmark. And then in between here, you have these states here. So you, you're telling me that if, if Russia did the same thing on, let's say, on a Norway. That's Norway right here. And if the Russia did the same thing, maybe even on, on Finland. How, how do you guys feel about the Finland? Or if the Russia did the same thing on a Stockholm, you're going to tell me that you would not go and at least protect their sky from bombardments from the from the from the warplanes not even this you would do i don't believe you when you say that when you tell me putin sits on on a on a nuclear button i'm going to tell you what i i got a i got a major lesson for you you see these countries here finland sweden norway of course they are important to the europe they are important to the Europe. 
But the thing about it is that the biggest, the biggest European country, the most strategically, the, mo the main country with the biggest importance, the shield for Germany, for France, for Spain, for Britain alone, you know, that's not Sweden, that's not Finland, that's actually Ukraine. And so these are really, really, really double standards. These are double standards that West needs to refrain itself from. You need to take an action. As of today, today, as I said, is a 12th day of Russian invasion on Ukraine. Not a single bomb landed on a Russian soil. And in my opinion, that's like really, really bad news. It really is encouraging for Vladimir Putin. As I stated, I don't see why he would stop war at this point in time. This is, this is Crimea. And Ukrainian people, Tatar Ukrainians, Ukrainian people are killed here every day. Further, they are even sent on a front line in the war against their own people in Ukraine. Thanks for watching this video. Don't allow them to undermine you. I hope you wake up and you stop copying news from one another. I hope you take a hard stand against this kind of stuff. Because if not, really, Europe is going to fall on this. It's going to be the end of it. This is not only Ukrainian security we're talking about. We're talking about the European security further. And this is why these people are undermining, as I stated, they supported Adolf Hitler too. Until the British people took matter in their own hands. Then British eventually enlisted them. So they understood what exactly went on. They are undermining, undermining entire worlds. Not only Ukraine and European security, because this thing is leading, make no mistake, this thing is heading the world into the dark era from the past. This is a war, this Russian war, this is a war against the whole world. Not against Ukraine only. Not against the women, not against the children. Europe, this is the war against the world. world.